Okay, hope everybody had a great uh, great weekend, enjoyed the Super Bowl. We'll get into that in a little bit. I want to start off today. Um, there's just certain people out there in public policy, academia, then they work their way into politics that scare the crap out of me. They scare the crap out of me because their ideas are dangerous. Um dangerous. Again, I, I don't mind debate. Everybody's free to say what they want and their ideas. But um, some of these people have been pushing things that, um, again, um, basically changed the country. And, uh, you know, they, they, they get a lot of airtime. There's a story. Um, again, you put me in a bad mood <laughs> as I started reading this. Because, again, this is just god-awful freaking journalism uh, at CNBC. Um, I think this is she always does it terrible. Just Anna Nova, I think, wrote this. I, I got to go back and check. But anyway, not important. Uh, what's important is what's in this. And they're they're talking about uh, Social Security. It's a big topic right now, right? You know, because you, you know, the conventional wisdom right now, you're hearing the stories out there is, hey, yeah, the Republicans want to take away Social Security and Medicare. No. Okay, does, does it need to be reformed? Is it running out of money? Yeah. I mean, it's been done before. It was last done under Reagan. And uh, well, who was it? Tip O'Neill was Speaker of the House there for Democrats at that point in time. But anyway, anyway, here's the story. Full retirement aid, Social Security, when workers are eligible for 100% of the benefits they've earned, is transitioning to 67. Now, again, this goes all the way back to Ronald Reagan. Eligibility for health care coverage under Medicare, uh, currently starts at 65, yet as both programs face funding shortfalls, one Republican proposal has suggested pushing those ages higher. And I, and I get that. Um, it, is, is that proposal out of the question? No. No, it's, it's not out of the question. I, I think it's something that we need to talk about. Um. They want Social Security's full retirement age to gradually go up until it's increased by three years. Based on their proposal, people born in 1978 or later would have a full retirement at age 70. It uh, wouldn't change to current Social Security beneficiaries or people ages 55 and over. Okay. The uh, also proposed raising Medicare's eligibility age to coincide with Social Security's full retirement age and then indexing that age to life expectancy. Um, again, you had State of the Union. Biden's like, no, we're not doing this. Uh, can't do a damn thing. But again, it's running out of money. So doing nothing is not the answer. Not the answer. Um, here, Social Security is a very simple problem. It's money coming in and money going out in benefits. This is uh, Alicia Munnell, Director of the Senator for Retirement Research at Boston College. There's two ways to fix it. You can have less money or go out or more money come in. Less money go out or more money come in. Oh, okay, thank you, Master of the Obvious. Um, there is no third way, she says as some have suggested, raising the retirement age. Increasing the retirement age is a benefit cut. Oh, okay, um, let me ask Alicia a question. Alicia, what if they, they medical advances um, continue to progress and uh, people start living to 110, 120? Then what? Th th then what, what are we going to do? How, how do you completely take that off the table? It's it's idiotic. Social Security amendment signed in 1983 ushered in today's phase transition to full retirement at 67. The initial eligibility age for retirement is still age 62. As uh, full retirement age goes up, those who claim at the earliest age face greater benefit reductions. The uh, 1983 legislation prompted other notable changes, such as making a portion of benefits uh, subject to income taxes, as well as providing delayed retirement credits of 8% per year for those who won't wait to claim after full retirement age up to 70. Okay. 1983 changes came as the program was facing insolvency. 
um, 80% of benefits are going to be paid out uh, in 2035. 2035, just getting 80% of your check unless changes are made. So this has led to suggestions of raising the retirement age. But again, this is one of the most dangerous people in the country. Um, <laughs> uh, big failure. Okay. Um, Teresa Geralducci, labor economist, professor, new school. I've written about her in the past. She's saying, saying that failure, adoption of 401ks just started, okay? And there was hope that those accounts could replace defined benefit plans and cover half of the workforce not covered by a retirement plan. She hates 401ks. I, I wrote a column about it back in 2010. She hates the whole thing, and I'll, I'll get into that. That's where it gets really kind of creepy. Um, she's saying, oh, that was a big failure. Big failure, 401ks. He said the number of workers who lack access to work retirement savings plan is still stubbornly high, making it easier. And there's still IRAs as well. In 1983, when uh, senior poverty rates were declining, they're now increasing. Okay. Um, they're proposing a 40-year-old plan that doesn't work for this economy. Okay. Okay. The expectation 40 years ago that people would live longer and be healthier, giving them access, ability to choose to work longer. Certain developments, particularly elimination of mandatory retirement ages and the creation of new anti-age discrimination rules contribute to that outlook. However, data now shows not everyone has the privilege of working longer. College-educated white workers could probably work until they are 70. This is according to Munnell. But other groups do not have that same luxury. Okay. Okay, I, 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 anybody have any problem if you uh, ha have a certain job and you're, you're coded a certain type of, of work um, that you, you know, say your work is more labor intensive, let's say you're a contractor, that you, you know, you're, you're employed in that career, um, that, you know what, you could retire earlier? I, I don't have any problem with that. They, they can code that and they can make adjustments when it comes to that. But again, they, they make it you know, lower education groups and racial minorities just do not have that many healthy years of life expectancy that they could do it. So it's discriminatory. Uh, raising the retirement age may only exacerbate those differences. She says 67 is about as far as you can go. So there's another reason why this is Gerald Ducci. Another reason why raising the retirement age would not work. Living longer and being able to work longer are not the same things. Evidence shows an increasing retirement age hasn't necessarily changed when people claim Social Security benefits. Most people who claim Social Security early are actually still in the labor market, but they're claiming it at a really low rate in order to supplement their wages. This becomes a problem when they're no longer working and their benefit check is not enough to cover their needs. Uh-huh. More people depending on Social Security for most of their retirement income. Okay. This, again, Jared Ducci, these, these people for a long time, uh, they hate 401ks. Again, they, they hate the, you know, they don't want people to have to be responsible for themselves and, and actually have to save and, and put money away. Um, again, yeah, delayed gratification and, and savings is, quite frankly, something um, that, that needs to be done. That needs to be done by everybody. You have to be responsible. We talk about this all the time, paying yourself every single month. Listen, don't tell me that you can't. Don't tell me that you can't. And I've talked about this before. I said, you don't put away so much where you're making your life miserable, but you take a certain dollar amount that you're comfortable with, that you know you can pay every single month, and you, you do it. And as you make more money, guess what? You're able to put more money away, but you have to be consistent about it. It's like exercise. It's like any other good habit out there. You need to make it a good habit. Do we have problems with financial literacy here in this country? Yeah. Is this something we should be teaching kids in schools? Absolutely. But there's more to it than that. And Teresa Gerarducci, um had a plan. She had a book out 10 years ago that, again, scared the crap out of me. When I'm 64, the plot against pensions and the plan to save them. And Again, let, let's let's think about this. I'm going to pull in different things. Okay, um, 
there are uh, trillions of dollars in retirement accounts in this country, trillions of dollars. Again, uh, 401ks, IRAs, whatever it may be. Um, you ever think about, again, we talk about the debt ceiling and you know what, what would happen if you know, we couldn't sell our debt anymore? What would happen? Again, most of our, our debt is in short-term instruments, and we have to roll it over on a regular basis. Um, you know, so what if, what if we couldn't do it anymore? Well, government has a plan. Oh, yeah, this is, this is real, people. This is real. Um, Teresa Gerarducci was proposing uh, eliminating the, the tax breaks. This is back in 2008. This is what they love doing this when the market sells off. Again, you had the financial crisis. The world's going to end. Uh, government needs to step in and take over retirement accounts. That's what they were pushing back in 2008. Yeah. Well, anyway, uh, she wanted to replace them with guaranteed government retirement accounts. Now, they have Social Security. They have pensions in places like Europe. Um, and let me tell you something. You know, my wife's family in Greece, since 2010, retirement plans were cut. They never came back. It's, it's not a lot of money. I, I actually looked up. I was curious to see what was the maximum, the maximum you could get paid out your government pension uh, retirement. Their Social Security in France is uh, 1,700 euros. That's the max. That is the max. That's if you're, you, you did really, really well, okay? Most people are not. Six, 700 euros a month. Anyway, um, basically, she wanted, her plan was in her book here, this uh, the plot against... Uh, Pensions and the plan to save them. All workers who do not have a traditional pension plan would be mandated by law to contribute 2.5% of their income to a government account with a 2.5% match. Again, this is on top of what you're paying already in payroll taxes. Then Uncle Sam would guarantee you a 3% return over inflation. Again, how are they going to do that? Ponzi scheme. It's just, it's another, like, like Social Security is a Ponzi scheme. It is. It's a Ponzi scheme the way it's designed right now. There's no doubt about it. There's no account. There's no money put away. It's money in, money out. Okay? This is just another one. So we got one Ponzi scheme that, that's on its way out, so you're going to start another one. But again, they're going to be able to have a lot of cash up front. Because guess what? They're going to force people, force people to take the 401ks and they're going to have to go into these government accounts. Now, do you think you're going to be able to keep your portfolio, your stock portfolio? Hell no. Remember I mentioned, what if the government couldn't borrow money or having a difficult time? Eh, force you and I to lend all of our retirement funds to the government. You, you think this is a conspiracy? It's it's not. It's it, it's not. It's not a conspiracy at all. This again. This this they talked about this at the labor department. I have the numbers here. Depart Department of Labor Employee Benefits Security Administration, Department of uh, Treasury Internal Revenue Service, back in two thousand ten. Um, reviewing the rules under ERISA. This is what they were doing. Um, and the plan qualification rules under the Internal Revenue Code to determine whether, and if so, how the agencies could or should enhance by regulation or otherwise, the retirement security participants in employer-sponsored plans, retirement plans and in individual retirement arrangements, IRAs, by facilitating access to and use of lifetime income or other arrangements designed to provide a lifetime stream of income after retirement. Okay. It's there. It's an option. They're working on that. It's, it's, you know, again, it's what they say. It's in the can. It's in the can. It's in the can. They can, they can dust it off at any point in time. It is that again, again, Uncle Sam, Uncle Sam won't start off 
They won't start off by uh, making it mandatory. It's going to be a choice. They'll give you a choice. But but it's funny how things that um, are presented as a choice end up becoming um, law. Again, so I just people, I'm just letting you know. I'm just like, you're worried about her. No, worry about them deciding to take all of our, our hard earned savings and forcing us to lend it to the federal government. Again, it's not conspiracy. All right. It's not, I'm not Alex Jones here. Okay. But we've been reporting on this for years. Anyway. Anyway. Well, let's get it. Super Bowl. Great game. Um, but I'll die. It was phenomenal. <laughs> but the beginning of the game, I was, you looked at both of the teams. I said, whoever. You know, in essence, whoever doesn't screw up, whoever doesn't make any mistakes is, is going to end up uh, winning the ball game. And uh, the Eagles had the, uh, the turnover, the defensive, and led to a Kansas City defensive touchdown. And it was also that, uh, that punt return um, that, that really kind of sealed their fate. But, I mean, they, they were dominating the game. Dominating the game. Again, mistakes kind of figured out was. Both very good teams, great game. Commercials. Um, Again, a lot of them watching, and I'm like, what are they selling? You just spent eight million bucks on an ad. What the flip are you selling? Not to mention, not to mention some of the ads out there were for I'm like, I I just don't even know what, what the point was. You planning on getting more customers for like like the peanut ad? Why? Why, if, if I want peanuts, I'm going to have, I, I don't, I don't get it, but uh, yeah, a couple of, I get the uh, Breaking Bad Walter White thing was, was funny. Um, <laughs> Tuco in it for crying out loud. Uh, then, uh, uh, yeah, the Ben Affleck uh, Dunkin' Donuts thing was uh, a bit of a hoot to say the least, but uh, overall I didn't, didn't get a lot of them. But again, if you go back and you take a look, you want to make a fortune last year? Fortune last year in the stock market, <laughs> all you needed to do was to short the companies that were advertising last year at the Super Bowl. <whistles> you did real well. Yeah, I didn't see any crypto ads. Told you. No crypto ads this year, huh? Okay. Uh, Andy Kessler, interesting piece. Again, I like his, his columns in the Wall Street Journal. We discussed some here. Um, talking about the job market. Job market, and he's, you know, the puzzling thing he's saying about he doesn't get this job market, but he doesn't get it. He kind of sets it up in that way. The fact that um, not enough companies, and we're talking about productivity here in the United States, haven't gone all in with uh, technology. And he talks about some of the changes that we're going to be seeing moving forward, more automation in restaurants, particularly fast food. Um, and other things. He goes back and explains, you know, how Wall Street used to operate. I, I've talked about here on the program in, in my earlier days where you had the, your, you know, your binders, client pages and holding positions. It was all, all done by hand. And, you know, you mentioned, you know, the, the concept of spreadsheets. I mean, you know, prior to, the, you know, spreadsheets, uh, on computers, I mean, they, they had to cut stuff with exacto knives and paste it. I mean, it, again, changed you know technology changes things, and it, again, it disrupts things. And when it happens, is certain jobs go away. It, it's certain jobs go away, but other jobs are created. It's it's the nature of the world around us. Talk about Joseph Schumpeter and, and creative destruction, and he talks about some of the issues that we have right now that really need to improve when it comes to technology schools for one schools for one is a, it's just a disaster disaster when it comes to the, the utilization of technology and the, the way that they can be teaching kids it's a, it's awful and it looks about medicine as well we talk about the high cost of medicine here in the united states but again part of our our high cost is just because we just are not healthy. It's not a healthy country. It's not. Um, you know, we don't eat well. We really don't. I, I think many of the issues around COVID kind of exacerbated some of the problems. Um, but um, he talks about, you know, utilize technology to a greater degree and uh, actually, you know, work on preventative medicine rather than chronic disease treatment uh, would be a step in, in the right direction. Um, he says, it's a, we got a jobs paradox right now. He said, um, those 
those clinging to the old ways are going to be passed by. The shortage and a glut of workers. Expect more jobs lost and better jobs gained as we embrace teledoctors, pharmacists, food subscriptions, custom fit clothing services, paperless government, campus list degrees. Oh, he mentioned that as well. I mean, forget about government, the amount of money that we waste, just how inefficient government is. Campus less degrees, um, concierge, plumbers, drone delivery. Yeah. And, uh, you know, again, they, they were talking about, you know, already, they, you know, they're going to have robots that are going to be stocking shelves soon. It is what it is. Um, you mentioned this, and uh, I remember reading about this, kind of jogged my memory. Bell Labs in, invented the transistor in 1948, but uh, AT&T had 20 years of vacuum tube inventory lying around. So it, it didn't use the transistors. So similarly, for decades, the economy had an inventory of baby boomers to throw at growth, but not for much longer. The fertility rate in the U.S. was 1.6 in 2020. This will be a year of re-rationalizing workers. Again, that'll get the productivity back up. You know, technology will find a way. It's, it's amazing. People talk about this all the time. I said businesses will find a way. Remember... Uh, Remember in, in Jurassic Park, where like, you know, oh, all the dinosaurs are designed to be female. How are they having babies? And he's like, well, nature will find a way. Well, again, think of uh, the world around us and the economy is nature. It will find a way. Uh, as long as you get the government out of the way, of course. But uh, anyway, um, some green stuff I want to talk about. The um, Republicans in the House are going uh, full throttle for domestic energy production. That's great, but you've got to get other people to sign on to it. Um, again, they had, um, you know, for during the four years of democratic control, climate change, environmental protection, green energy development were on, uh, among primary policy drivers in adopting legislation designed to coax the nation away from the reliance on oil and gas, uh, $1.2 trillion infrastructure law. Um, the infrastructure or the, excuse me, the $740 billion was an inflation reduction act. Um, Republicans made clear they had a House Energy Commerce Committee. Okay. This is February 7th and uh, February 8th. Uh, many initiatives passed under the Biden administration promoting electric vehicles, carbon capture, green energy, and environmental protection are on the block. Again, um, I, I I, I, I couldn't agree more. I, I get yelling and screaming about this often here on the program. You know, the fact that uh, subsidizing freaking electric cars. I mean, that was one of the Super Bowl ads. They kind of was kind of like took a bunch of Netflix shows and combined it with Will Ferrell and an advertisement for General Motors EVs. You want an EV? Get one. Get one. I, I'm being honest with you. I, I'm kind of waiting for... Uh, um, now I'm curious to see what that you know Tesla Cybertruck is is like. I, I am, I am. I I drove my my first electric car was I rent a rent car where I was in um, Orlando about uh, a month ago, and it it was it's interesting. It's like driving a golf cart, a real fast golf cart, where you know you used to you know have your your foot off the uh, uh, off the gas and a uh, combustion engine you know the car will still roll it doesn't do that in a tesla just a little it's a different feel to it but hey it it drove fine it drove fine and again you you want to get yourself an electric car get yourself an electric car but why the hell do i have to subsidize your electric car if the electric car is so freaking awesome and wonderful okay people will buy it why do you have to? Why do you have to give incentives? Why do you have to use taxpayer money to incentivize people's purchase of a certain type of automobile? Which you know, it's not environmentally friendly. People, I hate to break it to you. If you, you break down the mining and everything that goes into it, it's just not. So uh, again, whatever. Joe Manchin furious with the Biden White House over climate laws implementation. This is bullshit. He said. Yeah, he's livid about the implementation of the Inflation Reduction Act. Yep. Joe, 
you got a pass, buddy. Okay, so shut the hell up. Okay, because you're the moron that went along with this crap. Now you're livid with the Biden administration. No, you know what? Your voters in West Virginia should be livid with you because you bought it. Okay, you bought it. What you think you were dealing with for crying out loud? Germans are starting to think twice about electric vehicles. Carbon neutrality, something of a religion in Germany, but faith apparently has its limits. Witness the unfolding drop-off in sales of electric vehicles as Berlin withdraws costly subsidies. Gee, how about that? The uh, sale of uh, EVs fell 13.2% year over year. Uh, sale of hybrids came down, and the explanation is that the German uh, subsidies have gone away. Again, th th that's not a healthy industry. If, if you need somebody to subsidize, there's, there's a problem with that. and The government's got to get out of that business. Anyway, um, following this in the, as best I can, and I'm getting news from around the globe about what's going on. Because, again, I don't, I don't believe... Anything. I don't believe reports from the BBC. I don't believe any anything when it comes to the reporting that's taken place uh, in Ukraine and Russia right now. Is one story I read that uh, Russia is losing more soldiers per day than ever before. Some eight hundred thousand, eight hundred soldiers a day. Supposedly, we've lost one hundred and fifty thousand soldiers altogether. I, I don't know if I believe this. Okay, I, I just don't. I mean, I'm sorry. How how could we believe this? It's kind of weak. Once bit, twice shy. We're perpetually lied to by the media, especially when it comes to wars and conflict. So no, I I, I might be right, might be right, but, but but again, something doesn't sit right with me. Does it? Um, tanks aren't arriving in the Ukraine despite the promises from European allies. Okay, uh, again, I, I don't know what those few tanks are going to do. Well, you know, we've got a story as well, 500,000 Russian troops being amassed and going to move forward. The United States just ordered all, tell, tell all Americans to get the hell out of Russia. Um, you got to be pretty brave to be still hanging out there at, at this point in time. I, I got to hand it to you. I mean, I get it. You got some business there, whatever it may be. But uh, I don't want to bend up in any sort of, uh, you know, prison did you, you saw what happened with that uh what was it britney griner the basketball with the cbd oil Th they can make shit up and put you away i, I don't know why anyone would want to be there um yeah massing five hundred thousand soldiers uh 1800 tanks to launch offensive in 10 days now again I'm sorry, people. This is, again, this is where I don't understand the media and I don't understand the questions that they fail to ask, okay? First thing I would ask, I said, okay, we're sending, you know, uh, 100, I don't know, not even 100, Abrams tanks and the Germans are sending a dozen or two leopards. How the hell, okay, how the hell are those, you know, it's, it's under 100 altogether. How, how are they going to go against uh, the 1,800 Russian tanks? I'm just asking here. How how is that going to happen? I mean, it's crazy. I mean, I, I, again, there's been some you know, some of the tank battles in World War II where there was you know we were at a disadvantage, trauma, and all these things, and, and we ended up winning, and it was you know unbelievable the stuff that they teach in military school. But a uh, hundred and some odd tanks versus eighteen hundred tanks. Mm. Anyway, um, uh, Elon Musk getting some uh, flack because he told uh, Zelensky told the Ukrainians that um, uh, they're not going to allow them to use Starlink, which is the allowing the Ukrainians to use, but they're not going to let them use it for military purposes, uh, defensive only. Not going to allow it to, uh, uh, you know, basically, you know, uh, guide missiles and, and do various different things. And, and I get it. I get it. I, I understand it. I know. So, oh, it's too, it's, no, 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 no. Okay. Uh, you know, I, I'm sorry. You, you put something up like that. You want to be responsible or par partially responsible, having your stuff involved with maybe starting World War Three. And, and, and nuclear missiles being shot. 
Nah. Nah. Anyway. Um, yep, I, I gotta end on this one today. We're gonna end on this one today. Um, I I get racism knows no bounds, I guess. Uh, this um white neighborhoods have greater abundance and diversity of animal life. Systemic racism makes animals abandon black neighborhoods, researchers say. Yeah, this is this is this is a story. This is a story. Systemic racism alters uh, the demography of urban wildlife populations in ways that generally limit population sizes and negatively affect their chances of persistence. Who knew squirrels are racist? Anyway, have a good one. Watchdogonwallstreet.com. Watchdogonwallstreet.com. We'll see you.